Hello everybody, Jobin Blue here with the progress report of April 2017 for RPCS3. First of all, I'm sorry it took so long. It should have been out way before now. For those of you that aren't already aware, this is a PlayStation 3 emulator. There's a bunch of helpful links down below. There's a Discord, a Patreon, just a bunch of more info in the description. And as always, a link to this blog in the description if you just want to go see it there. So for this report, Triple S Shadow decided to put all of the quote-unquote fun-ish stuff at the beginning and left all the technical stuff to the ending, which is totally cool. For this progress report, there were 18 authors who made 104 commits and added 9,621 new lines of code and deleted 1904. So to start off with, we have the RPCS3 compatibility wheel. For the month of April, there were 175 new games tested. And as you can see here, all of the numbers are up from last month, which is really great to see all this new progress. And with 175 new games tested, it's crazy to think that only 33 of them just did nothing. A lot of these AAA titles were affected by this thing called SPU improvements. Games such as Grand Theft Auto V, and Red Dead Redemption now do a lot more because of this improvement. I'll talk about that more later on, but there is so much progress for all these AAA games. And of course, to start off with, we have the wonderful Persona 5. It's still not really playable yet, and you need a really good CPU to even get 10 FPS, which is just crazy. They posted a video of it on their website if you'd like to go there and watch it. So the RPCS3 team was looking into this game and we know that Digital Foundry proved that it's obviously locked to 30 on consoles, but they discovered that in RPCS3 the game could run at higher than 30 FPS and it didn't have any physics issues or any kind of problems like what you would see in Breath of the Wild on Simu. So basically what they're saying is that after RPCS3 gets all of their performance improvements and the internal resolution gets kicked up, you could theoretically play Persona 5 at 4K with 60 FPS on RPCS3. That is just crazy to think about. They went on to discuss in their progress report about how whenever they uploaded this video a day before the actual game came out in the United States, PC Gamer posted an article about it and we actually got a response from one of the devs right here that actually worked on Persona 5. And as you can see, he looks very disappointed to see this already happening. Here's another screenshot of Persona 5 on RPCS3, if you didn't get a good look at that earlier. On to some other games. Atelier and R. Tonelico both saw performance improvements. And they also posted a video down here. And what the RPCS3 team said is that these games play perfectly if you have a good CPU, especially whenever you're running it with Vulkan. Bioshock went from doing absolutely nothing to now going in-game, and they say it is, still has some good graphics. I assume that the progress on Bioshock is about what it was like for Bioshock 2. As you can see here, it looks pretty good, but there are definitely still some issues. And they say that it is very playable on a good CPU. Bleach Soul Resurrection now goes in game and is basically running at 30 FPS on a Ryzen 7. Going off of their Demon Souls hype, we have here the sequel, Dark Souls, now going in game, but unfortunately it's not as fast as Demon Souls. It still has a lot of issues loading things. The console exclusive Destiny now shows intros and loading screens. But they can't really test it further because RPCS3 does not have online support yet. After fixing some save data bugs for Persona 5, this other game called Dengeki Bunko Fighting Climax now goes in game. And they say that it is really fast, but as you can tell there are some graphical issues. Devil May Cry 3 HD is now flawless, except for some audio issues. This is kind of interesting. So this game, Tiskaya 2, uses unnecessarily high CPU loads on a real PS3 and thanks to a patch by Nekotekina, and now the game runs at a higher FPS, averaging from 5 to 10 before, now to 30 to 60. 
and someone has already beaten the entire game in RPCS3. Eternal Sonata had its performance doubled, but there's still some graphical issues, and it's still not fast enough to be played. Fat Princess went from doing almost nothing to being essentially perfect, but as you can see here, there's still some graphical issues, and it still crashes sometimes. Final Fantasy X and X2 now go in-game, but they're still very slow. And this is thanks to an SPRX module loading improvement by Necrotechna. I'm not really sure what that means, but it's still good news regardless. Flower now goes in-game, but it's still really slow. And as I said before, Grand Theft Auto V, thanks to these SPU improvements, now renders a lot more things, but it still looks like it's running pretty slow. <laughs> Hatsune Miku Project Diva F appears to be emulated flawlessly and one of the developers of RPCS3, a and I, got a perfect score on an extreme difficulty. And they have a video here that you can watch of that. Heavy Rain was also helped out thanks to those SPU improvements, and its graphics are now rendering a lot better as compared to last month's. <laughs> but they say there's still a few glitches. Hitman Blood Money is another game that went from doing almost nothing to now being basically playable. And besides some graphics issues, they say it is running at a pretty good speed. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure HD is now basically playable. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle had some lighting bugs fixed, but unlike its counterpart, it's still too slow to be playable. Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 Remix saw some performance and graphics improvements, and they just wanted to show off here an image from Linux. Mirror's Edge went from nothing to end game, but it's suffering from some bloom issues. Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots has some improvements from the aforementioned SPRX fixes, but it's still not playable. But they showed off gameplay of the original Metal Gear Solid in the embedded PS1 emulator, and they say it works. Although it kind of looks like it has some graphics issues. Graphics in Near Replicant are better. Looks like it's still a bit too slow. Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 went from doing nothing to going in game with some good graphics, but they say it's still running at a very low speed. So it turns out that some of the crazy graphics with Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch were caused by those SPU bugs. Of course that fixes some of the graphics issues, and they said that there were also some improvements to the performance, but as you can see right here, it's still not fast enough to be considered playable yet. Midnight Club LA was another game that was affected by those SPU fixes and went from showing only the sky and some trees to now showing the entire city without all those crazy glitches. They say it may be playable, but it's still too slow to test yet. One Piece Unlimited World Red now goes in game with some graphical glitches, but it's still pretty slow. This game currently runs a lot better on the Simu Wii U emulator. It did have broken compatibility for a while, but that has been fixed with Simu 1.7.5. Outrun Online Arcade runs at a smooth 60fps with a few graphical glitches. And of course, RPCS3 does not have an online mode, so I'm not really sure how much you can actually do with this game. Red Dead Redemption, thanks to those SPU improvements, now renders its graphics almost perfectly but it still crashes due to some other SPU issues. Resident Evil Revelations went from doing nothing at all to now going in-game and being perfectly playable at full speed on a good CPU. Skate 2 had some graphical improvements, but unfortunately it's still not very fast, and there is a graphics issue where everything is just covered with an orange hue. Sly Cooper Thieves in Time now renders graphics perfectly, but unfortunately it still crashes. When leaving the title screen, shortly after the March progress report was published, Tekken Revolution started going into the intros, and ever since then the graphics have been getting better. When using some hacks, the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim now boots and can go in-game, but it's still very slow. Similar to Fallout 3 in the March progress report, it has the ESM and ESP files like a PC version, so this can be modded as well as Fallout 3. Someone has beaten The Legend of Heroes Trails of the Cold Steel 2, and they said it had great performance and very few graphical issues. 
The Worms series, as you can see here, now goes in-game, and they do have a playable speed, although they are suffering from some graphical issues. It's not a game, but it's still cool regardless. Homebrew emulators such as SNES9X and Visual Boy Advance now run at full speed in RPCS3. So now you can emulate a PlayStation 3 emulating a Game Boy Advance, which is just pretty crazy to think about. I'm not going to go through all of the developer specific commits, but there will be a link in the description below where you can read everything. I'm just going to go over all of the things that I found to be the most important and things that I could really understand. One really big thing to point out here is Nekotechna did some work on the Linux versions of RPCS3 and now everything that should be compatible with Windows should also now be compatible with Linux as well. There is still one bug where Intel and AMD cards running Linux do have some issues with their LLVM recompiler. It'll probably be fixed by the time of the May progress report, if I were to guess. So now you have to compile the builds for yourself and there's a way to do that. GitHub. If you personally have any experience with Flatpak, AppImage, .deb, or .rpm files, or anything that's similar to that, they want you to go out and talk to them on their Discord. KD11 made Vulkan better. They were the one that was responsible for fixing the SPU bugs that caused graphical issues in Nino Kuni and GTA 5. Currently, he's working on some performance improvements. Envious fixed something that allowed more games to start saving. Scribham did a bunch of stuff, but the main thing that they wanted to point out was that he improved better logging for unimplemented functions. Anna Leo also improved with logging functions. Mega Mouse helped to clarify some things in the GUI. Farseer 2 helped fix an issue with trophies where they would be logged, but it still doesn't show that they're getting unlocked. And by allowing them to be logged, they allowed games like Ultimate Tenkaichi to stop crashing. Raven02 fixed broken anti-aliasing and Catherine. The developer Jarvison is working on native support for DualShock 4 controllers that also includes support for 6-axis and vibration features. So more games like Flow and Flower should be playable because they do require strictly the 6-axis control. They are working on rebuilding the GUI which is basically what we as end users see in the file window and everything like that. It's the user interface, basically. They are teasing performance boosts for a certain recent title. A lot of people seem to think that it's going to be Persona 5, but I actually had a conversation with one of the developers of RPCS3 A&I, and they said that they think that more than one game is going to be able to take advantage of what they're working on. So to close out here, they basically say that things are going good and their Patreon has been rising and been meeting all of its goals. And they are encouraging you to go check out their Discord and see if you like their rewards. I believe that patrons actually have a little bit of a say in the next thing that they work on and they get a little bit more of priority. So that'll wrap it up for the April 2017 RPCS3 progress report. This may be the last one that I will do. It kind of depends. I saw on the Discord yesterday where Triple S Shadow was talking about how they were talk they were looking into talking to a, another YouTuber that was not me about maybe starting up some videos for their change logs and stuff. I know there has been criticism by some of the developers of RPCS3 of my videos that they do kind of sound like an audio log, but that is primarily I do that because I don't want to skip anything that somebody else may have thought was like really big or I don't want to offend Triple S Shadow in any way, shape, or form. I don't want to just like go out and make a video that was like, oh, Red Dead did this and GTA 5 did this, but nothing is playable yet and everything still runs super slow, you still can't play Persona 5 4K at 60 FPS or anything. And also myself personally, I tend to watch videos at like a higher speed than just 1x, 
So something like this, I would watch at 2x, and whenever I watch this video at 2x, I really like it. I do understand how with a 1x speed of this video that it could seem to lend more on the audiobook style, and I completely respect that criticism. RPCS3's development is currently at a point where they are all starting on the like new stuff and they're showing all these new games that are starting to do stuff. So as compared to something such as Dolphin, which is so much later on in their development cycle where they're talking where they're tackling specific game bugs, such as that that quote unquote anti piracy thing of Smurfs Jans Party. RPCS3 is at a stage where everything is starting to do stuff now and they're in the full swing of things. Simu is kind of like that, but Simu is a bit farther along in its progress. And while something like Simu is definitely not at a point where it's like dolphin status, it is definitely at a point where the big games have smaller and smaller improvements every time, which is to be expected with the emulation development cycle. I have thought about making a shorter version where I do just cover what the AAA titles have been doing and all the exclusives, stuff like that, and make that into a second video. I like to have these because it does give me the entire picture of what did happen in the month of April 2017 for RPCS3 on their progress report. But tell me what your guys' opinion is on the way I do this kind of thing whether it be RPCS3 or Dolphin or anything of the sort. I want to know what you guys have to say. Do you appreciate that I go through everything, or would you more like to have two versions where one is just AAA stuff and the other is basically everything in terms that I can still understand? But anyway, that'll wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I apologize it came out so late. It was really weird with the way I was working on everything. At first, I was so caught up with school. And everything and then I finally did get around to working on it and it was like thundering outside and then I got sick from being exhausted from finals and then as you can probably still hear now my voice isn't perfect but I thought it was about time that I go ahead and finish and get this review out and I'm sorry that it hasn't come out sooner than right now there's a lot more stuff coming I'll try to get to it as fast as I can but yeah just trust me I got a ton of more videos I still need to make so keep a lookout for them. And again, this has been Jobin Blue, and thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.